Hi and welcome to Christina Marie TV. I'm your host, Christina Marie. Now, if you've spent time in the Mission District in San Francisco, you know not only do they have fabulous burritos, but they are known for their beautiful murals that grace many buildings around the Mission District. Well, with us today, my guest tonight is the pioneer in this art form. Uh, her name is Susan Cervantes, and she is the founding director of Presida Eyes. Hi, Susan. How are you? Hi. Doing well. Thank you. Very good. So now we've we've seen these murals. They're beautiful, and they're all over, very vibrant colors. You have all different things that it depicts. Where did Presida Eyes start at, and what was its first mural? Do you remember? Well, I remember that it was a portable mural that a group of artists who gathered together um, wanted to continue to do murals after... I worked with them on the Flynn School, which was the first monumental piece that I did in 1976. And uh, people still wanted to continue to learn how to do murals and work together collaboratively. So I started a workshop at the Presida Valley Community Center. And um, so we decided, well, we didn't have a wall, so we did, we did our first mural on, as Presida Eyes, on, a, on, a, on panels, on a portable mural. And um, there was about eight people. And when we finished it, we collaborated on it, where everybody contributes to the design, everyone's responsible for their part, and painted it. And then we put it up on the Bernal Heights Library, mm -hmm. um, which was really fantastic, because that was the point, was to get it outside and make it public. Um, so that was our first one. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it, uh, we did the China Books and Periodicals Company on 24th Street, and um, many other ones since that time. And, uh, and everything that we did from that point was by request, mm -hmm. and all the way up to today after 33 years. Um, and that's what keeps us going, is this request. So it is uh, much different than many other ones because it is a collaborative effort, very much. And it's funny because so many people work on it, and yet it looks very flowing, like it was done by one person. How do you achieve that when you have so many different artists working on one project? You achieve that through uh, theme development. You know, everyone's working around the same theme, so that kind of bonds the imagery together. And then everyone's using this uh, fantastic paint, which is acrylic paint, uh -huh. uh, and you know, we're all using the same color, so it's not hard to get it all to be integrated. Mm -hmm. Now, you have told me that a lot of these projects, in fact, most of the projects on the buildings are made as collaborative effort with the neighborhood. That's correct. Uh -huh. Now, do they come up with a concept, or how does that happen? Uh, they, well, they, when they call us, they, they may be a group of seniors, it might be a school group, it could be um, whatever. And uh, so what we'll do is we'll do a community workshop, it's, uh, and we'll guide them through the process. And they will actually decide what the themes are going to be, what they want to see in the murals. They will do designs and drawings, maybe poems, um, or even write what their ideas are. And uh, they'll also do a huge composite drawing, which is like a giant thumbnail sketch. Mm -hmm. Decide where everything's going to go and what kind of a story it's going to tell with all the imagery. So it's really taking, going from words or ideas and, and beginning to visualize them. What, well, how do you visualize this idea or that idea? And they get, the, they get that and we make a composite. Then the, from that point, then we do a uh, scale drawing and they may even in get involved in coloring it, doing the color scheme for it and then everyone uh, sh sees it and approves it and then they can start preparing the wall and transferring the design and everyone's responsible for their part. Mm -hmm. So they are responsible for transferring it, and painting it and inviting their friends if they wish to come and help uh, paint it as well. We do things that are uh, like a community paint in sometimes where we have uh, dozens of people, sometimes hundreds of people painting all at once and finishing a mural is huge in one day. Now is there a certain demographic of the people that usually volunteer from the neighborhood or do you get the grandfathers and the grandchildren, I mean all the different ages in between? Well we do, we have had several where it's uh, intergenerational um, and which is a lot of fun. Um, you know I think the most recent one is a, is a tile mosaic piece out at Crocker Amazon Playground where we did, you know, six benches and a, one big concrete boat. You know, we had uh, epic themes on each of the benches and, you know, but, uh, and they were following a design, a color scheme, and uh, the grandmothers would come with their three-year-old granddaughters and they helped, they helped them, you know, put the thin set on to stick it onto the wall and they were just thrilled to be able to be a part of that. 
Now, which murals, in case someone hasn't ventured through the Mission District and found these yet, what are some of the most popular ones that you might be able to give uh, intersection where they can go and check it out themselves? Well, they can see, I mean, even, if, if anyone that goes down 24th Street is going to run into several murals. I mean, almost every, every corner, every alley off of 24th Street um, has uh, probably 60, 70 murals just within, you know, a six block radius. Um, you know, such as uh, Cesar Chavez School, um, the front and the back is the only public school that has murals that go all the way around it from top to bottom. Mm. Um, and um, the women's building, for instance, uh, the, one of the largest monumental works in the city. Now that, if you haven't seen it, it's absolutely astounding. It covers almost the entire building. Yes. Uh, what is the actual size of that piece? Well, it's, it's a four-story building, but it's like about 65 feet tall. and. You know, if you wrap around the two sides, it's it's over. It's almost 200 uh, feet long. Mm -hmm. And that was a collaborative effort by female muralists. Right, the collaboration with uh, seven women artists, uh, uh, and uh, it was a unique collaboration because the women that I worked with, we had over when we started it, was over 100 years of experience already. Wow. You know, and and we still meet once uh, every six weeks. We still meet er, over the 15 years, that was 16 years or so. That we since we finished the mural, and we actually took the mural indoors uh, this past summer, and we had a big grand uh, celebration for that uh, mm -hmm. in September. That's amazing. And and now you were saying that you draw artists from the different neighborhoods that commissioned the project, or the project is there. Are they mural artists, or are they just artists in all different forms that come together to make the? Uh, uh, well, final there's di you know different different kinds of collaborations, you know, I mean, the, the women's building was a unique one and we've also, like the one we're working on now is with six uh, artists from the center mm -hmm. uh, who have been involved, some of them have been volunteering for many years, some of them work at the center and so it's a collaboration. Um, I did a collaboration with uh, other, uh, with African American artists in the Bayview um, and that's, it still is the same process, um, working with community, what do they want to see on their wall, it uh, gives them ownership and gives them a voice and also getting them involved in the process. You know, like I said, we have community paint-ins mm -hmm. where, you know, we can have several, you know, dozens of people who are invited to come and paint in. Uh, uh, we, so paint in the mural because we can let go and the community can let go so that other people can participate in it. Mm -hmm. And it brings a sense of pride to the community that they all pitched in, actually physically hands-on, hands created on, this piece. Exactly. And I've noticed that, um, we were discussed this earlier, that in driving through the mission, most of the murals that I see are not tagged, do not have graffiti over painted, over vandalized. Do you think that has to do with the fact that they had so much interest from the community in creating it? Oh, I think that has a lot to do with it. Um, I, I feel that that's the, the big key to uh, to it because they feel that this is about them, it's for them, it's for people's art. Mm -hmm. um, the community was involved in it. The more community is involved and they see themselves in it, the more they're going to take care of it and be proud of it. Absolutely. We're going to take a look at one of the murals right now. This is the one that we're seeing. Uh, where is this located? This is in the 24th Street Mini Park. Uh, it was just completed uh, at the beginning of the year. Um, it was. It's a painted tile and mosaic a uh, mural that was uh, designed and created by the community uh, that used the mini park. Uh, the children and families who use the park came to a workshop and developed this design. Mm -hmm. And then there were other members who came and painted the tile. So each tile that's, is handmade and there's over a thousand handmade tiles that are painted. And then there's uh, the mosaic sections which are mostly in the background. Uh, which were all hand cut and put into place. Now that's very time consuming mm -hmm. mosaic work. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is, uh, how much time did it take to create this piece? Well, it was over a year, uh, and, and probably a year and a half from the very beginning. Um, of course, then, you know, the fundraising for it you know, was before that. And so many, many, many volunteers participated in this, um, you know, because, uh, you know, the, you don't have as much funding, so you get lots of people involved in it.